go ahead, since we're on the subject of movies right now, let's go ahead and get into our top 10 movies of 2016. And I'm going to try to do this as efficiently as I can, because since all of us have to do, well, at least Goodwin and Martin and myself, since we all have to give our top 10, I'm going to try to work through this as quickly and efficiently as I can. Now, what I might elaborate on is the last five, because one of the great things about our list is that we all have different tastes in movies. Sure. Mm -hmm. And... When you and it's especially clear when we get to the last five of our list how different we all are. For example, I like good movies. Okay, <laughs> you know <laughs> we're not going to start why, that. Why shit. you always got to ruin? I this. know. I just <laughs> I'm just creating fake drama. That's all. I actually appreciate. I actually appreciate the diversity that we have here. And one of the things that you also must understand is while I agree with a lot of what the Oscar ha- the Oscars have done, uh, this is a personal list. And there might be some things that you might not be able to make sense out of, but we found something in the movie that appealed to us. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and try to get into a very quick top 10. And let me go ahead and get into for my number 10. Let me see here. This is my number 10 movie right here. Saw three. Mm. (laughs) Can I ask you a question? How come you ain't never like me? Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> and that's the reason why. <laughs> For some reason, the moment before even Denzel spoke in this trailer, I said, why did that boy ask him that? Because mm-hmm. Denzel looked, like, looked up like, what the fuck you want now? <laughs> 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 he almost looked like you about to ask me some dumb shit, aren't you? While I'm out here working on a Saturday. But here's the thing about this. And I'm just going to say this real quick. The reason why Fences is my number 10 movie is because for two hours, this movie was my daddy. And the reason why it ain't, I mean, seriously, I was, I was scared of this movie. Nuh-uh. It was my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, we had the same daddy. He ran out on your mom and came to my mom. <laughs> because this movie was, it, this movie made, I was scared not to put it in my top ten. <laughs> I was scared law? that Denzel was going to come up and be like, boy, you missed something. Yeah. <laughs> what law says I got to be outside your top ten? Yeah. <laughs> well, what law says you can say I got to put you in my top ten? What you say, boy? <laughs> none, none, none. Should I move up to number one, sir? <laughs> but... I didn't let it go higher because my thing with this movie is that it is based on uh, a play. And while this is considered to be a a classic play, and it's been long overdue, a play that came out in the 80s, and it's been long overdue for a proper film adaptation, it's very overdramatic to me. And I could feel that stage presence on there. But this is a movie that is held up by the performances of its actors. I mean, I'm looking at some of the actors in here, and these actors are amazing and it's just so powerful that you cannot look past for 18 years well, i've been standing with you i mean people that viola viola davis yeah. her no snot has more emotion than most, most actors out there right now this movie was a powerhouse of a film as far as performances go and that's why i put it in my number 10 but just a little and martin hates it when i say this just a little too stagey <laughs> Uh, when I said that, Mars like, I told you he's going to say that shit. <laughs> Sorry, that's the way I feel. But here's, here is uh, my number nine movie. Let's uh, start with where you're from. Calcutta. Which part? I'm adopted. I'm not really Indian. Lion is my number nine movie. And the reason why I love this movie so much is because every stage that this character goes through, played by Dave Patel. That's his name. Dev right? Patel. Dev Patel. I know. Dave, Dave Patel. Patel. <laughs> <laughs> he went on to he went on to make <laughs> hamburgers and start his own restaurant. But uh, Dev Patel. Dev Patel. He plays different characters. Well, at least two characters at different stages of their life, and both those moved me so much in different ways. I mean, it was such an emotional powerhouse of a movie for having two different people, an adult version of that character and a little version of that character. And I got to tell you, the, the reason why I'm actually going in and giving this movie the rating or, or the putting that number nine is because just based on that little kid's eyes, man, I know that man. little boy was so cute. He was. He was looking at me like, please put me somewhere on your list. That little boy was so abandoned and had to survive, and I'm, the, I'm a sucker for it. I was it. like, we got to go out and adopt a little Indian kid. And then I saw his brother. I was like, mm. No, <laughs> I'm not no. feeling confident <laughs> about this lottery here. I want to adopt an Indian kid, too, but I, wanna, I always want that, you know, return policy on him just in case it don't work out. That little kid was played hey, you by— you sold me a retarded <laughs> <Yeah. back>. hey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This, this is— uh, <laughs> 
Hey, if you saw the movie, you wouldn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really wouldn't laugh. <laughs> no. Kushi Solanke is this kid right here. Kushi. Kushi, yeah. yeah it's a cute name. Even his name is cute. I mean, I got a soft spot for puppies and little kids, man, especially little kids with big eyes. What's that little kid? Yeah, you know, that, and really, people, if you watch it, it's, it's, there's, a, not a, there's, there's so many times that you want to cry in this film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So many, from the very beginning. Uh, my number eight movie. And this is going to be, I think, a surprise to a lot of people. Morning, Donnie. Everything okay? No, not really. It's my uncle called from India and he needs money for my niece's wedding and I got this strange rash on my back. How about you? You know, this is Patterson. My, my number eight. Every, anybody else in the world besides Patterson would have said, I, I didn't ask for your life story. Or he would have said, fuck off. You know? It'd be funny if that little kid from Lion grew up to be that guy. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've become. <laughs> How was your day? Well, I was raised on the street. I had to survive your day, motherfucker, not your life. But, but this right here, you know, the reason why I love this movie so much is because it just put me at peace. Sure. It was a movie that showed me that, you know something, a lot of people, it's that rare movie. I think we get, when it comes to best movie, we're told that we have to pick something that's kind of flashy or big, has, a, has the money behind it. This showed me that you really can go in and make a big impact. Impact emotionally. When I say emotionally, not anything that's going to make you cry, not anything that's going to make you angry. Just kind of sit back and just make you feel, wow, man, you know, sometimes just going in the life of average people is a great thing to see on the screen. And Patterson is that. It really is a movie about just a, 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 a week in the life of a guy that's happy to be a bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> he don't want nothing else. And if they can make something out of that and make that even somewhat interesting, then, hey, they've done their job. It's the best bus driver movie I've seen all year, man. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get into our number seven movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fart movie, Swiss Army Man. And the reason why I'm saying the fart movie, I'm not trying to be childish, but whenever you tell people, you got to see Swiss Army Man. If anybody knows where it is, it'd be like, the fart movie? Get the fuck away from you, childish son of a bitch. It's funny because you guys both came back telling me, like, man, you don't want to see this. It's a bunch of farts. I mean, you might like it, but I don't know. And, yeah, they sent it to me, and I was like, well, I, I got it. I might as well watch it. I s- fell so in love with this movie. Well, Martin, we'll see if it makes your top ten or even your top five. But I fell in love with this movie, too. Because, I mean, it really does take some. It got to the point where the, I, couldn't tell, I couldn't even tell people about this movie because they really did laugh at me. I'm not the one where Harry Potter was farting. <laughs> he was dead. <laughs> exactly. Idiot. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> and it was hard to tell people that that's not even remotely what this movie is no. about at all. It's just to hap- it happens to be a condition. The, the thing with this movie is that that's something to throw you off. The whole movie has, it keeps taking so many twists and turns it in does. it. It does, even, even to the very end. And you cannot, you, I'm guaranteeing you, this is a film that no one wants to put on their top ten list because... It's, no, it's notorious for the premise, or the perceived premise that's put out there. But when you look at the art direction in this, it was one of the most imaginative films that I'd seen all year. And one of the films, and I'm always saying, as much as I go in and say, I'm always looking for something different, this was different. It's very <clears throat> much like, uh, it, it feels very Charlie Kaufman-ish. It really did. Yeah, and I even said that in the review that I had, that it felt like that. And... <clears throat> or, or who was the guy that did... Uh, Michelle Gondry. It, Michelle Gondry, mm-hmm. yeah, that's who I actually yeah. said. Whenever I, I'm talking about doing something different, this is that different movie that I'm looking for. Something that starts out simple but goes into so many storytelling te- levels. Yeah, I mean, I was worried that he was gonna, it was gonna end with him riding him out on the escaping the island. Well, are we getting any spoilers right no, now? No, no, no spoilers. That that because they showed that scene with him riding him and the fart <coughs> compelling him, and I thought, so it's gonna end like that, stupid. Well, you know, we still don't want to say well, nothing. That's that. it. We still don't want to say nothing. That's that is kind of a spoiler right there. Hey, let's go ahead and get to. I believe I'm on number six right now. Zootopia, a gleaming city. So, this is the most adorable movie I've seen about racial tension ever. That's <laughs> you didn't like do the right thing that wasn't too happy for you? <laughs> it's almost like do the right thing with fur. You know? <laughs> and a happy ending. Because this, that, Disney, for years where they wouldn't take too many risks, they'll do it when they find the right way. 
they'll go out there and actually try to say something if they feel like it can make them money and they can put under the guise of what they usually do. And this is what this is, man. As I said, this is a movie that is making a statement about race, race relations at a time when racial tension is high. And I, and, and I don't think that went over the, the heads of a lot of people that saw it. And I'm always, again, I, I admire movies that say something, especially when you get it out of some of the most popular entertainment out there. You know, indies can go out there and take all the risks that they want. When Disney is doing it with a multi-million dollar animated film, mm -hmm. that's something. And it worked. This is one of the smartest movies that I've ever seen. This is something that Disney 10 years ago wouldn't have ever touched. And when they did it, it was something that I was highly impressed with. Uh, without also being a heavy-handed film, too. You know, the message was not. It was cleverly woven into every little story, little bit of story that they had there. It didn't stop with a sign and everybody held hands like, let's all get along. You know, I didn't do that. I admire that. Wait, what movie film. does that? New Ops, Jack City? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no Browns everywhere. We got to stop the crack. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> let's go ahead and get into the number five film. What might be called first contact. The objects measure at least... I'm Colonel G.T. Weber from Army Intelligence. Pack your bags. You know, the thing with the arrival, I'm going to say it right now, I was not as impressed with this as other people. And I still thought it was a full price movie, but I came out and I was like, ah, you know, I don't know what all the uproar is about this, but sure, you know, people like it, I'll go along with it, full price. And about four days later, I woke up and I was like, Whoa, what the fuck? You know, like, like that twist in that movie caught up to me days later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's what that meant. Uh, yeah. Oh. oh. I mean, I got it, but one day I thought about that shit. You ever lie in bed and can't sleep, and for some reason the arrival came into my head, and I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Did them aliens actually go in your mind? Yeah, that just spoke to me. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, that's what that meant. Bro, you were there to figure out Kaiser Sose. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was my favorite mug. <laughs> but, you know, but with this... I admire smart sci-fi, and I got it. It just didn't make an impact on me until later. It was really something that, that's what I mean by movies that stick with you. That's why I sure. appreciate that, because the movie stayed with me. I didn't hate it. It didn't blow my mind the first time around, but when I thought about it, laid down with it, put it all together in my head one more time, I was like, wow, man, I really have to give this movie credit for the script that it has. This is one of the few movies that I would say this was so strong before it even hit the screen. Yeah. And when it did hit the screen, the director, what's his name? Oh, uh, uh, Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah, who was one of my favorite directors anyway. I love the tone of this film. I love the pacing of it. I finally learned to appreciate the tone that it took and, and, how, and the time that it took with that. It's a very moody film that does exactly what it wants to do and makes you feel the way it wants it to. And again, it does it without having to be too heavy. And the aliens in this, they're not using it as a gimmick. This is something where they say, here's the alien. Now fucking think. Okay, you know, <laughs> forget about the special effect. Use your brain. And again, the fact that this movie was appealing to a wide audience out there. And I thought because it was brainy, a lot of people were going to like blow it off. But it got good word of mouth and the right audience went to see it and supported it. Now we're entering the top five. We just did the number five movie right there. I think that my list from this point on is probably going to be similar to what you see the critics think and the Oscars, you know, do with the Oscar nominations. I'm probably going to be a little more mainstream with mine. But let me see here. My number four movie. Now they can foreclose on Friday. So come hell or high water, get the money to the bank on Thursday. All right, I'm going to admit it to you. One of the reasons why I really love this movie because I was just surprised by Chris Pine. Sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, let's just go ahead and admit, like, Chris Pine, he's not a bad actor, but he's been playing Spock and been playing... Kurt. Kurt I mean, Kirk. <laughs> yeah. Man, he's playing both roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy's amazing. Yeah. He's got more range than you thought, man. <laughs> he was playing double roles the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love when he played a rock, but, you know, you know, in this... Chris Pine, man, he's been playing Kirk. He's been playing dumb pretty boys. This was the one where I'm always, I'm, I'm just happy when I see an actor just transcend what everybody pigeonholes him to be. Sure. You know, they said in the right place, which is uh, Texas. Or, no, was it? Yeah, it was West Texas. Yeah, it was West Texas. And they got, and they were able to bring all the elements of an old Western, bringing in the modern times. 
and still not be too heavy with that, not gimmicky with it. I thought it was a well done movie, man, as far as an action movie goes. Uh, it's one of those action movies that transcends itself, that genre to be one of the best movies of the year. I re the movie, the, the, this movie blew me away when I saw it. And immediately when I said, I, when I saw it, I said, that is in my top five. It got knocked down a little bit because I actually had this as my number two. But then we had some other movies come up, such as my number three film. <laughs> what happened to my brother? Yeah. You know, th this uh, Casey Affleck is giving is giving is getting a lot of uh, attention for this, and he should. He's uh he's he's giving an amazing performance right here. But he's a you know the, what what impressed me with this is that he's a man who's uh who's giving a, a performance from a guy who can't really feel anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hard to do to like give an emotional performance when a guy ain't giving no emotions out there. Right. But I like the approach to this. <clears throat> the trailer is making you think that this is going to be some really. Uh, heavy heartfelt drama and it's not they managed to take a, 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 a subject that's pretty depressing and still make it somewhat entertaining make it sure. very matter of fact and you know just take that nice touch of Boston assholishness <laughs> <laughs> to it and show you how these people I mean you're like hey my brother's dead I can't take care, can't care of this fucking nephew of mine you know it's, it's, I, I like that and it's and, you know but out of all that frankness that this, that this movie has, there are a couple of moments in this where it just ripped my guts out, man. Same here. Yeah, I was I, I was watching this and the, you know I was laughing through a lot of it. It was kind of pulling me out with the humor, but right when they had to pull you back in and also just clench your heart, man, it really got to me. Uh, my number two movie, and you might be able to take a guess. Anyone? Anyone want to guess what this is? Moonlight. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the reason why I have La La Land at number two is because, well, first of all, it's a great story, if you ask me. I do love it for the reasons that Hollywood gets blamed for loving something like this, because it's classic. It's a classic love story, also with, with, with a touch of melancholy to it. It's about love and sacrifice and people being there for each other, but also having to keep their distance from each other. But it's told in a way, you can, you can tell that Damien Chazelle just loves filmmaking. This is, again, yeah, it's flashy, it's colorful, and I love that about it. But this is something where every part of the movie had some creative thought behind it. This was so well planned, so well choreographed, the musical numbers, the dance numbers, and right down to the dialogue and the actors that they chose. I think Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are great on the screen together and they do tell a classic love story and there's nothing wrong with telling something classic if that person who's telling it really feels that and really appreciates old filmmaking and Damien Chazelle said what I want to do is I want to get people back in the theater and get them that feeling like it was for some of the older uh, films that were out there including the days of the musical it's extremely hard to bring a musical in the modern times and make it not feel again like a gimmick but because of his love for it and his love for jazz that's exactly what he managed to do and this is my number one movie right here, which, Corey, you got this one. Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> no, Freddy Krueger. No. Why are you looking at me like that, bro? Like the way, why are you looking at me like that? Like, because I want to fuck you, nigga. That's why. <laughs> you know, the, the reason why I actually chose this movie to be number one over La La Land, which for a while was, La La Land, La La Land was at my number was at my number one. But the reason why I made this number one is because while I love the love story in La La Land, it's not anything really new. Again, it's classic. This movie, even though it doesn't have the flashiness of La La Land, it still shows that there are stories to be told by people of color on the screen. This should be something that we, it shouldn't be a surprise. Mm -hmm. This should be something that, yeah, there's, there's gay, there are gay black people. Even in the hood, you know. But what? <laughs> <laughs> gay thugs? What? <laughs> Thug in love, but but, this <laughs> but man, do the homemade. <laughs> you finished? It. Yeah. Damn, he's more blacker than all y'all. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know something. With this, it just goes to show you how Hollywood, our film in general, just, just has not allowed some of the stories of people of color to be told. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and even this was under the condition that people go see it as a hood movie. So, you know, I... I Wait, what? People, this, <laughs> was was this, this, this is advertised as a hood movie? No, not really. You know, as uh, a, but I thought they like, you know, we'll catch that straight black person who thinks that this is the next minister society or something. But, <laughs> but boy, were they here for yeah, a shot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These motherfuckers <are> gay. <laughs> <laughs> but with this, you know, I, I, and I just think it's uh, being that I always say, are there deeper stories to be told? 
this is one of those stories that actually just made that kind of impact on me. I, I when I say I've never seen a movie like this before, I, 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 it's not doing anything too different, but I haven't. We usually reserve that for some special effect or something. But I, I was just blown away by the movie the first time I saw it. I felt every little bit of it. And again, it is not some big movie. I don't think it has a huge budget or anything. What's up? Man, for you, every time we go and see some kind of art house movie or something, it's like, man, I ain't no artsy fartsy kind of guy. But all your top 10 besides Utopia was an art house mixed with something. Arrival? Arrival's kind of an art house sci fi yeah, movie. It is. Yeah, it is. No, you yeah. hella high water. <laughs> yeah, an action. <laughs> Don't even kind of make that face. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Everything except you told me, I was like, art house, art house, art I house. Know. I just did a freeze room on myself. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I. I like that because I think that's where some of the most bold stories well, are being no, told. Well, I, no, I, I dig that because I feel like that's probably where you say all of our stuff differs. Like yours is more art housey, ours will probably go different ways. Yeah, yeah, and and maybe I am, but it's not because I just want to be that guy. I just think again, that's what we're seeing different things, and I, and that's what I appreciate. You know, I we see so many movies that that's it's just refreshing to me when I see something I don't sure. normally see. Gamefly brings to your house, to you, over 8,000 new releases and classics that are available to rent or you can buy them for almost every system out there, current and some old systems. Like I said, man, I've been trying to put my GameCube back to work for years. Gamefly is giving me an excuse to do that. And you could even try 30 days for free by typing in gameflyoffer.com forward slash double toasted. And when you do that, you, you'll get 30 days for free of games and movies. Get all those things, all of them at once. Just stay in the house. Don't go nowhere because they're all going to get brought right to your mailbox. You can also bring the element of surprise every month to your home in the form of a Loot Crate mystery box. In that box, I can't tell you what it is, but I can guarantee you it is the best in geek and gaming gear. Some people say it's like having Comic-Con brought right to your home. You don't have to leave the house for nothing. You're getting all kind of stuff. And everybody likes a little surprise every month. Just a little bit. And here's another surprise for you. You know, if you go to our link, trylootcrate.com forward slash double toasted, and you type in bridge. 10, that's the word bridge in the l number 10. You can get 10% off, a 10% discount on your first crate. How's that for a surprise right there? Loot Crate, bring the mystery and the surprise to your mailbox once a month with Loot Crate. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and go over to our home, doubletoasted.com, for more videos and live streams. And remember, stay toasty.